Welcome, everyone, to the Heifetz Holiday Homecoming for 2022. I'm Benjamin Rowe, the President and CEO of the Heifetz International Music Institute, and so pleased to have this outstanding cohort of four Heifetz alums who are with us to share some classics of the season, some Yuletide favorites, uh, some wonderful chamber and solo pieces, and a few surprises. You know, the thing about these holiday concerts, which are very special, is that, of course, we are able to share with you some of the true classics of the season, uh, some of that music that really is time-honored. You know, this, this time of year is when we hear Handel's Messiah or Bach's Christmas Oratorio or The Nutcracker uh, by Tchaikovsky. And certainly we have some favorites to play for you along those lines. But it's also... It's timeless music, but it's also very much of our time. And there will be a certain theme that you will hear in this program tonight, which is very reflective of how many of us will remember 2022. It was, in fact, 100 years ago, on October 5th, 1922, that uh, the first piece in the program was first heard in America and was performed by the Una Ukrainian National Choir at Carnegie Hall. Um, this piece was originally called Shedrik, and uh, for those of you who may not have command of Ukrainian, um, that means swallow, as in the bird. And the, uh, it was based on an old folk tale that a swallow flying into your home would be bringing you prosperity for the new year. We know it better these days as the Ukrainian bell choir. It did indeed premiere 100 years ago, so it seemed fitting to open this program with a no bells allowed performance of the carol. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Soyan Ko. I'm 16 years old. Violins came from Atlanta, Georgia. So I first came to the High Fest when I was 12 in 2018. And I was with High Fest every single year from that. I even was part of the virtual session. And I learned so many things at High Fest, and I mostly loved communication classes. And I got very much of the chances for master class and lessons with like all the you know, famous professors. And HiFit is very special to me because I first speak, started to speak English at HiFit when I was 12, and I learned so like, you know, English in some of the communities and like that. And I'm going to be a freshman year next year at the Manhattan School of Music, and I'm the student of Pinkus Zuckerman and Patty Kopeck.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dilshad Narzilayev, and I come from Uzbekistan. I'm 25 years old. Um, but I'm based in Boston, studying at the New England Conservatory right now. Um, first time I ever came to uh, Haifetz Institute was 2017 summer, and I could call that one of the best summers in my life. I, m I met so many amazing friends that summer that were my age as well, and um, uh, it was a quite special moment for me, and I, I love Haifetz because there's so much you can do. You can perform and you can socialize, and the communication class were um, very new to me, and I kind of discovered myself in those classes. And now I'm very happy to be back here with these amazing musicians. We've been um, together for the past two weeks, and it's been an amazing time. Um, thanks for coming here. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Jerome McCoy. Uh, I come from Waldorf, Maryland. I'm 23 years old. And currently, I study at the Florida International University. Um, I'm a master's student. Uh, I also play with the New World Symphony. <clears throat> Before that, I was at the Cleveland Institute of Music. Um, I actually met both of my teachers, my undergraduate and my master's professor at the Heifetz Institute. So not only that, but I also got to meet a lot of other amazing musicians since I've been here. And um, my favorite part about Heifetz, I would say, aside from you know, getting to work with such amazing musicians, probably is the communication training, the classes. Um, there was a lot of variety in what we got to do, like acting classes and um, dancing. Yeah, it's, it's playing, yeah, so. It, I, it was very nice to, to be able to spend two summers at High Fits and to learn and grow and to be invited to come back on tour with the High Fits Air Ensemble. So thank you for coming tonight. Hello, my name is Min Che Kim. I'm from South Korea. I'm 27 years old. I'm currently studying at the Cleveland Institute of Music under um, Jamie Laredo. I attended to the Haifetz Institute of Music la last summer, and then that was my first time. So I'm really happy to be back here again. Um, I really liked my experience in Haifetz because I learned so many things. I attended to a chamber music seminar, so we had to rehearse a lot. We had to play a lot, even though we didn't meet each other <laughs> before. Um, so we had amazing um, uh, teacher Shimo Ashkenazi and Bormo String Quartet, and I played um, amazing Beethoven String Quartet 59 number two and Schubert Death and the Maiden. It was one of my favorite summertime. Um, I, so the next piece we're going to play is a combination of two carols, which is a Czech bells carol and the German carol named In Dulce Jubilo. In Dulce Jubilo means in sweet enjoying in Latin. So let's start the very joyful program. <laughs>
nice to see you again. <laughs> um, so right now, I'm going to be playing the third etude by Piazzolla, Astor Piazzolla. Um, he was a composer, conductor, and a virtuous abandoning player. He was born in Argentina, but he spent much of his childhood in New York. Um, this etude takes up the texture and techniques from etude number one by Piazzolla, but demands even more florid and much difficult like playing with stronger dance rhythms. Thank you. Hello again. <laughs> okay, so right now, Ellison and I'll be playing the 24th Caprice by Niccolo Paganini. Um, this is Paganini's the most celebrated work, and the last of which in the, th uh, which in the form of a theme and variations. 
This piece was originally written for solo violin, but I have a special guest with me today, so this is going to be really inspire you to hear this caprice um, in a different ways. Thank you.
When we gave the first speech, I forgot to tell, I was also at Haifa's 2019 summer, so. <laughs> yeah, I just said 2017 for some reason. Um, Alice and I are going to play piece written by Robert Schumann. Um, he was a German composer, and the piece is Adagio and Allegro, which stands for Adagio, slow, Allegro, quick. Um, um, and this piece is very special to me because uh, it has um, so many uh, qualities to it. Like the adagio part is very singing and um, because Schumann wrote a lot of songs as well. Uh, it's basically imitating the um, singer. But the piece is written funny, I mean, funny enough to, for horn and I'm gonna be playing on cello, so. Um, it's a great piece we, we borrow from, from, you know, horn players. Thank you. Thank you so much.
So the next piece that we're going to play is titled Sweet for Violin Orchestra. Um, it was written by Rafe Vaughn Williams, composed in 1935. But the arrangement that we're going to do today was actually composed specifically for the Heifetz Institute. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to do two movements today titled Carols and Christmas Dance. So, thank you.
So the next piece is going to be the Russian dance from Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky. So Swan Lake is a ballet music, but we have a special arrangement again <laughs> from our former staff member, Lucas Butterbach. He arranged for a violin solo and a string trio accompaniment. So this Russian dance is a part of act three. It's when the black swan Odile seduces the Prince Siegfried. So it's very passionate, sensual, a little bit bittersweet, and very joyful. Thank you.
Hyphus Institute was founded 25 years ago with the mission of developing the creative and expressive potential of every young musician. It's a different environment. You're not here to be judged. You're here to learn and to grow with everyone. The listening and the understanding of how music really fits together makes it so a true virtuoso brings a sensitivity and a nimbleness and a creativity uh, to the way they interact with music, which means they can play these solo virtuoso pieces so beautifully, they can play a string quartet so beautifully. My time here in Stanton has been absolutely amazing. It's such a beautiful area and it really puts you in a zone to, to learn and do your best. The Hyphus Institute is really founded on three pillars. The first pillar being the outstanding faculty that we attract who come from some of the leading music schools and conservatories around the globe. The amazing world-class faculty of the Institute drew me to apply. When I arrived, I was surrounded by incredible, mature, and passionate musicians. Performance by itself is not necessarily complete. There's also the aspect of reaching out and connecting with your audience. The second pillar is our communication and performance training. Our students are also learning about public speaking. They're learning about dramatic gestures and movement, improvisation. Even little things like how you look at an audience and how you bow, how you learn to speak before an audience, why you stand and you don't sit. There's an element where they really need to question themselves uh, about what is it that I am trying to communicate? Where does it reside inside myself? How do I connect with that? How do I explain that to people? Giving a speech to our audience and really informing them of what we're playing or how we feel about the piece gives the audience an inside look of what we're thinking when we're performing. And then finally, our third pillar is that these aren't just theories. These are things that we put into practice. And that is where our intense festival of concerts comes into play and where the audiences play such an incredible role in the development of our young students. The opportunities to perform are kind of endless, which is such an important thing to actually get hands-on experience and not to just stay in a practice space or rehearsal. We're adding a number of new innovations, including an even deeper focus on behavioral science, how students can learn about their own behaviors so that they'll be better at practicing better at performing. Though we all listen very hard while we're playing, every time a student is asked to perform, there is a dress rehearsal, which is carefully audio taped and videotaped that allow us to really witness our playing in the same way that an audience witnesses that play. Listening to yourself with that kind of intensity, uh, no matter what leads to you having a better understanding of what you're aiming to do in the concert that is coming up. Taking a great performance and making it even greater. There's a wonderful line that one of our patients said to us. They talk about hyphen students who arrive like stick figures and they leave like moving works of art. I think now the Institute is in such a special place where it's continuing to grow, adding new programs. I think it's really just a magnificent gift to Stanton and to American music in general. It's about the emotion and the expressivity, the personality that's inherent in every performer and in the music that they play. Join us for Heifetz Here and Now, a new Sunday afternoon concert series in Stanton, Virginia, at Mary Baldwin University's Francis Auditorium. Inspired solo and chamber music performances and fascinating pre-concert conversations featuring the outstanding faculty and alumni artists of the Heifetz International Music Institute.
So I'd like to play um, um, French dance music um, written by Jürgen Sebastian Bach. And it's uh, his third cello seat in C major. Um, I'm sure all of you know number one. Um, but this, this piece is very uh, interesting because it has two bourrées and they repeat both. And um, I would like to um, encourage you to maybe imagine um, in, in 17th century, 19, 18th century, uh, in French village, two people are dancing together. Thank you.
Pasichalia uh, goes by another name titled the Handel Halverson Duet. And the reason for this is because it was composed by Johan Halverson, um, but it's based off of a melody from uh, Handel's G minor suite, uh, suite for harpsichord. Um, the melody, uh, which is a theme and variations in this piece, uh, takes the listener on a journey. Um, Johan Halverson does this by using a range of techniques that our instruments are able to do, such as pizzicato, um, double stops, and a variety of others. So I hope you enjoy this with us. Thank you. 
So the next piece is going to be um, Divertimento by Igor Stravinsky. This piece is on his self-arrangement from his own ballet music, The Fairest Kiss. So yeah, I'm a sign for a lot of Russian ballet music tonight. <laughs> um, when he was composing this piece, the Fairy's Kiss. It was um, the 35th anniversary of the Tchaikovsky's death. So he, this work is an homage to Tchaikovsky. So you will hear a lot of um, quotations from Tchaikovsky's works here and there. So it will be very interesting to check the, the music after this concert. Thank you. Thank you. 
us for Heifetz Here and Now, a new Sunday afternoon concert series in Stanton, Virginia, at Mary Baldwin University's Francis Auditorium. Inspired solo and chamber music performances and fascinating pre-concert conversations featuring the outstanding faculty and alumni artists of the Heifetz International Music Institute. So, because I apparently need some more communication training practice, the group asked me to uh, do a little introduction for this one. Um, but first, I did want to just note that, as I did in the final concert of our summer, that of course, these final concerts are always moments, they're passages. And um, we take a moment to uh, remember and to thank those um, who have done such amazing service to the Hyvis Institute. And I think you just heard in these performances that these, these musicians who've been playing together for the last two or three weeks have been doing some extraordinary things together, but it's a final concert for them, and you can see that they're leaving it all here. Um, in case you didn't notice. In case you didn't notice, when Jerome and, and Sohim were playing the Pasacalia, Jerome actually broke his string. Now, that happens all the time with violinists. Never seen a violist break a string here on the Francis. So, good on you, Jerome. Um, I mentioned before that this is a time for some Baroque favorites. You've heard Bach, you've heard Handel by way of Halverson. Uh, and now we're gonna go back even further. I want you to cast your mind back even further than the French dance that uh, Dilshaw was talking about. Back to Renaissance Italy. Uh, the 20th century composer named Ottorino Respighi actually went back to the manuscripts in those dusty old libraries in Italy and uh, found a number of airs and dances by his Renaissance predecessors in Italy. Put together a fantastic three suites actually called Ancient Airs and Dances. And we're gonna play four of them for you now. This is the royal we, of course. Um, the movements are Balletto and then Galliarda Italiana and finally the raucous Bergamasca.
So as one final note for our final concert of 2022, I began by mentioning that this is a year where we're going to have milestones that we will all remember. We began with the Ukrainian peace and we're going to end with the Ukrainian peace by one of the most famous composers of modern Ukraine uh, named Miroslav Skorik. And this is an interesting, it's got a very prosaic title, it's called Melody in A Minor. Uh, this was actually just played by the Ukrainian National Orchestra with Joshua Bell on tour, and it's sort of become an anthem for Ukraine. Uh, ironically, it was written for a Soviet war propaganda movie in the 1980s, <laughs> which among other things was decrying nationalism by some of their Soviet vassal states. So take with that what you will. But uh, this piece was actually also used to introduce uh, President Zelensky when he addressed the joint session of Congress uh, this summer. And uh, it's really sort of become an anthem. Some people call it the Ukrainian Schindler's List. So a beautiful little melody by Skorik.
The Hypers Institute was founded 25 years ago with the mission of developing the creative and expressive potential of every young musician. It's a different environment. You're not here to be judged. You're here to learn and to grow with everyone. The listening and the understanding of how music really fits together makes it so a true virtuoso brings a sensitivity and a nimbleness and a creativity uh, to the way they interact with music, which means they can play these solo virtuoso pieces so beautifully, they can play a string quartet so beautifully. My time here in Stanton has been absolutely amazing. It's such a beautiful area and it really puts you in a zone to, to learn and do your best. The Hypus Institute is really founded on three pillars. The first pillar being the outstanding faculty that we attract who come from some of the leading music schools and conservatories around the globe. The amazing world-class faculty of the Institute drew me to apply. When I arrived, I was surrounded by incredible, mature, and passionate musicians. Performance by itself is not necessarily complete. There's also the aspect of reaching out and connecting with your audience. The second pillar is our communication and performance training. Our students are also learning about public speaking. They're learning about dramatic gestures and movement, improvisation. Even little things like how you look at an audience and how you bow, how you learn to speak before an audience, why you stand and you don't sit. There's an element where they really need to question themselves uh, about what is it that I am trying to communicate? Where does it reside inside myself? How do I connect with that? How do I explain that to people? Giving a speech to our audience and really informing them of what we're playing or how we feel about the piece gives the audience an inside look of what we're thinking when we're performing. And then finally, our third pillar is that these aren't just theories. These are things that we put into practice. And that is where our intense festival of concerts comes into play and where the audiences play such an incredible role in the development of our young students. The opportunities to perform are kind of endless, which is such an important thing to actually get hands-on experience and not to just stay in a practice space or rehearsal. We're adding a number of new innovations, including an even deeper focus on behavioral science, how students can learn about their own behaviors so that they'll be better at practicing better at performing. Though we all listen very hard while we're playing, every time a student is asked to perform, there is a dress rehearsal which is carefully audio taped and videotaped that allow us to really witness our playing in the same way that an audience witnesses that play. Listening to yourself with that kind of intensity uh, no matter what leads to you having a better understanding of what you're aiming to do in the concert that is coming up. Taking a great performance and making it even greater. There's a wonderful line that one of our patients said to us. They talk about Heifetz students who arrive like stick figures and they leave like moving works of art. I think now the Institute is in such a special place where it's continuing to grow, adding new programs. I think it's really just a magnificent gift to Stanton and to American music in general. It's about the emotion and the expressivity, the personality that's inherent in every performer and in the music that they play. Join us for Heifetz Here and Now, a new Sunday afternoon concert series in Stanton, Virginia, at Mary Baldwin University's Francis Auditorium. Inspired solo and chamber music performances, 
and fascinating pre-concert conversations featuring the outstanding faculty and alumni artists of the Heifetz International Music Institute. Thank you.